Oh. I just went live since we were talking. Can you unmute yourselves, guys? Do you know how? I don't know why that happened. Why did it mute you? Nicole. You got uh, there, there we go. It said we were in the green room. Oh. So I don't know where the green room is, but there we go. Well, you're out of the green room and into the fire? <laughs> yes. All right, this is us. We're good. We're set now. Woo. Woot. Uh, so you were telling me how you guys met, and welcome to Team Gavel. Let's get this in really quick. Hold on. Legal information is not legal advice specific to your situation. So. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm glad you do. It's fun. Yeah. So first of all, thank you, Nicole, for being with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's good to see you again, dude. At least in the virtual capacity, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do, and we can kind of talk about what somebody in your role generally does, and then we can kind of spice it up and talk about games. <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, well... Um, I work as a public defender in the city of Petersburg. It is a time of, the correct term is wonderful, beautiful Petersburg, as my boss likes to call it. Um, it's <laughs> a great city. I love it. And it's a really good place to be a startup PD. Um, I graduated in May of last year. So it hasn't been super long that I've actually been doing this, but um, it's been mostly like misdemeanor stuff and traffic dockets and going to general district court and going to the jail, um, calling clients, that kind of thing. So mostly it's traffic stuff for right now, like DUIs or hit and runs and, and um, a couple of preliminary hearings that I've had to have um, another attorney on for right now because I'm not certified for felonies just yet. Um, so it's 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 a lot of fun, but it's a lot of like just I don't know hectic, really fast paced general district court kind of cases for right now. That's cool. That's cool. I always tell people that criminal defense lawyers have the best stories. Is that accurate in your <laughs> view? I would say so. I think <laughs> because court is. It's always fun. It's always a blast, even if it's not your case. I mean, if you just because especially having to sit there all day, because if we're if we are assigned court for the day, you just sit there for most of the day. So you see everyone else's cases and you see all the pro se defendants and all the sovereign citizens who really like to come and argue with the judge and yell a lot about how tint is not unconstitutional. So it's really fun. <laughs> the sovereign citizens. Is this a common thing in Petersburg? Uh, I think we've had maybe three or four since I started there. Um, but that was like my 2L summer when I started interviewing. So it's not super common, but it's more than I expected. Um, I didn't expect to see like three of them in less than two years. <laughs> so That's crazy. Seriously, that's yeah. insane. Because like, I mean, I don't know if our audience knows what the whole sovereign citizen movement is, but like there's this idea that like I... I am not under our system of laws here in the U.S. for some strange reason. I, I don't know. It's just I remember going down that rabbit hole one night on like Wikipedia and the Internet. And then I was like, wow, OK. And then then you sleep it off. But then to hear that it comes into our courtrooms frequently, is this, that's entertaining. That's cool. Yeah, it, it is. Um, and there's always something usually really, really petty behind they the one of them was that the officers wanted to measure his window tint. So he rolled his window all the way down so that the officer couldn't see his window anymore. So he got, he caught an obstruction charge <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was like, well, it's, it can't be obstruction because he had no right to stop. He was like, so you can either go to jail on obstruction or take the window tint fine. And he's like, I'll take the window tint fine. And just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, given the really? choice right like it's one or the other at that point so yeah 
Man, when I first moved to Virginia, <laughs> they dinged us on that, the window tent. They had us untent our windows, which was, I, I really? felt it was super lame, but whatever. Yeah, <sighs> it is. I, I don't understand why we care so much about it here. They, they weren't that dark. I mean, they you could see through them, but that's neither here nor there. We're not talking about Virginia window tent laws. <laughs> um, <laughs> James, where are we headed? Well, we got a little bit of an intro into what you've been doing, Nicole. And, you know, maybe we just talk about what generally, I, I don't know, you just want to talk about stereotypes and trends and things that public defenders do. Because, I mean, obviously, a lot of people associate public defenders as, oh, okay, well, when there's a really bad person, you know, they're going to work with the public defender and the public defender only works with bad people. So like, you know, start the conversation. What do public defenders do? What do they not do? Like, let's go from there. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting first assumption, actually. My, um, I remember when I first started this job, my dad actually asked me, he was like, so so do you find that most of the clients that you work with are bad people or good people who just made some bad decisions? And I was like, most of the time, they're just idiots, really. Like that sounds <laughs> terrible to say. It does, but for a lot of the time, it's just it's just like really petty stuff that people have gotten in trouble with because they were they they keep doing things that are in front of them because they have bad choices presented to them and they don't really have a good one to pick, right? So most of the stuff that we wind up doing is, is well, first of all, it's anyone who can't afford an attorney. Um, I do think there's a part of that that's a little ridiculous because we still have to get um, court costs, right? We don't get paid through the court costs, but the court still assesses our costs to the client when the client is, um, once the case, client's case is over if they are found guilty. So if you still have to pay court costs, I don't remember what the amount is capped at, but we have, you know, it could be a couple hundred dollars of having to pay for your public defender at the end of your case. So first and foremost, actually, we're not free. I want to clarify something for anybody who's listening. It, and when people think about public defenders and, and you don't have to pay for them, um, I think there's this perception sometimes, and we definitely see this, where people are like, well, I'm going to go hire a real lawyer. I'm going to hire a private lawyer, as if public defenders aren't real lawyers. Can you just speak to that just a touch as you continue? Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, that's that's definitely something we hear a lot, actually. Um, and I, I do think it's kind of funny because for the most part, the public defenders who are in the jurisdiction that you're in are the ones who are the most familiar with the judges that you're in front of. They're the most familiar with the Commonwealth attorneys. They're the ones who've talked to the police officers the most. So... Yes, they may have a lot of cases, but you're probably getting the most experienced attorneys in that jurisdiction if you're sticking with the public defender's office than you would be if you're getting a private attorney who's working in a bunch of different jurisdictions. Like they still are obviously very capable attorneys most likely, but they're not maybe as familiar with where your case is, is being heard. So um, it's definitely something we hear a lot. And um, part of it obviously is there's this long history of public defenders just being overworked and really, really busy and just not having enough time to go see their clients or talk to them. Um, we've gotten, you know, some pushback from clients who just think that you're never going to come see them or you're never going to talk to their family. Um, and that's usually alleviated in the beginning as long as you actually go to see them regularly or actually call their family in the beginning of their case. And then suddenly they're a lot more comfortable realizing that, okay, you are going to take time to hear what I have to say. So I think that the concern is just that people rightly so, believe that you can't represent them if you've never spoken to them. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> that's the case for a lot of appointed attorneys. Or um, I, that's, that's another actual common problem that I think we've seen is that clients don't usually know the difference between appointed attorneys and public defenders. And appointed attorneys don't have the same... Um, they don't have the same mandated training that the public defenders do through the Virginia Indigent Defense Commission. They don't have the same requirements and they usually don't have the same um, like support structure that we do as part of an office. And so 
they kind of conflate the two and, and they can have had very, very bad experiences with some public defenders or some appointed attorneys and then just assume that that's all of the appointed attorneys that they're going to interact with, which is unfortunate, but it's an experience that they, they legitimately have. I've seen a lot, of, I've, I've seen clients before who their appointed attorney from another jurisdiction hasn't seen them in, in three months or so and they're incarcerated. Um, mm. So you get a lot of that where people just think that we're just not going to have the time for them. Um, so they want a real lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make sure and point out that it's that's like a bogus thought, right? Like it just doesn't, yeah. when people think that, oh, it's a public defender, right? Like lots of people go into the public defense, go into private practice. Some people go back and forth in their career. You're lawyers. What you do matters and counts. Yeah. So I, I just wanted to make sure everybody listening knows. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, I know. I think there's, there's there's an assumption that like people become PDs when they weren't able to get a private job uh, after law school or something. Like it's their default, which is sad because like I really really love yeah. this job. It's really great. Like I wanted to do this when I came to law school, and I'm doing it now, and I really love it. And everyone I work with really loves it. Um, so it, it's it's kind of unfortunate that even in law school, I think it's kind of seen as like a backup plan. Um, and it's not because it's a great job. Yeah. For, for a lot of people, it's their plan A. So that's cool. Yeah. So, and go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, um, you know, if you just want to explain why some of the people do end up choosing being a public defender as their plan A, uh, you know, we have a lot of people who, when they're thinking about law school, they'll say, you know, I want to help people. And I mean, that's what everybody says when they go to law school, just about, but, um, finding that specific category of, you know, which people you want to help, how you want to help. That's kind of what is the real drive for a lot of attorneys. So, you know, for me, I wanted to work with artists. I wanted to work with creators and that's kind of what keeps me going. Uh, was there a specific community that really motivated you to protect them and um, kind of move forward in your practice? That's a really good question. Um, I, at least for, from, from my personal experience, I wanted to be a lawyer really early on. I didn't know what kind of lawyer. I knew I wanted to do some kind of criminal law. Um, so I, I always wanted to do law stuff, right? And I was raised in a, in a super conservative, like very, very evangelical, um, far right environment, right? I was homeschooled all 12 years of my, my formative experience by a military dad and a Philippine mom. And so I had a lot of my opinions shaped at an early age that way. Um, and then I got to college and a lot of things just kind of, I, I guess I, I found a lot of what I personally wanted to believe, right? Like nothing against what my parents had taught me, but just more of like, I had found my own, um, path and a little bit more of like what I thought fit with what I believed was right. And the more I saw that, the more angry I got at how I was taught what I what I considered to be a lot of lies um, about how the world works and about how the justice system works and about how police officers work and about, you know, whether or not the law is actually meant to protect citizens or whether it actually acts to protect citizens. And the more angry I got, the more I wanted to do something, anything. Um, and so by the time I got to law school, I think I was already at the point where I knew I wanted to do something criminal defense. I didn't know at that time that public defender was exactly the plan A, um, but I did know that I wanted to do criminal defense. And I thought maybe I could do some, you know, civil litigation work or something. But I just really had a love of criminal law and I don't think I could step away from it. And um, the more I talked to public defenders about how they did their job and about how like 80% of their job is talking to the clients who are incarcerated or not incarcerated, right? Talking to their families, trying to help them with their personal problems, right? Doing, doing things that are not just law related, like maybe their car is impounded and you try to help them find a way to do, you know, to figure out how to get that resolved, right? So they can get to and from their probation violate or their probation meetings. And so things like that, where you're actually able to make an impact on a person's life really spoke to me as something that I, I wanted to do. Um, because it really, it really, um, I guess it satiated that feeling of like being helpless and angry. 
uh, that things were just so messed up and so wrong. Um, and I'm still feeling all of those feelings, but at least, you know, there's somewhere to put them. <laughs> Get to right? do something about it. <laughs> they haven't gone away, <laughs> but there's somewhere to put them or something really satisfying. That, that's something. Um, uh, thank you for sharing that very personal experience. First of all, let me say that. Um, I think um, a lot of people go to law school with that in mind. I, I was late to the party and, and, and discovered that upon graduating that, uh, man, there's a lot of things that do need to be fixed. So you're doing great work. Thanks. Um, well, thank you. Yeah. So one of the things we wanted to talk about, are we ready to jump into the entertainment portion of this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll take a, a more lighthearted approach. Um, <laughs> after talking about some of the problems with our society here. Yeah. So we've been playing a very interesting game the last couple of weeks on our Twitch channel on, our, on Friday is game day. And so we have been playing Phoenix Wright, a attorney. And yes. <laughs> James tells me that you're somewhat familiar <laughs> with this game. Uh, tell us about this. Oh, love Ace Attorney. <laughs> so, um, my partner got it for me my second year of law school. Um, it was like right after finals and I needed something to like unwind. And I just adored it from the beginning because I just love that you open it up. And it starts with, you're a new lawyer. It's your first trial. It's a murder. And you're like, that's not. <laughs> it's just not. That's nuts. <laughs> well, and it's two days after the murder happened. That's the thing that cracks me up, right? Like murders on August 3rd, trial August 5th, right? Like what the crap is happening? Speedy yeah. justice. <laughs> anyway. Or I think my favorite is just the like, oh, well, you don't have any evidence to prove he didn't do it. Therefore, your defense is flawed. And I'm like, that's not, that's not how it works. Uh, I, I love it. I think it's great. Um, I actually watch a, um, a Dungeons and Dragons stream called Critical Role where the person who does the voice acting for OBJECTION, um, he plays a character in that. So I've gotten very into the, the voice acting in it. That's cool. That's very cool. Um, well, yeah, so tell us a little bit about what's completely absurd and what makes sense, if anything. Um, but uh, yeah. As a public defender, your take on Phoenix Wright as attorney? Oh gosh, I don't, I don't know if there's a whole too much that makes sense. Actually, here I think, I'm going to play I this one more time, just in case. So here we go. Hold on. Legal information is not legal advice specific to your situation. Just so nobody gets confused. All right, go ahead. It's good. Um, gosh, yeah, there's not a lot that really makes. I think sense uh, cares about his clients. That's probably the best part and the most accurate part. He cares a lot. And he's a good, you know, he tries really hard. Um, I love the attorney himself and his like psychic partner, I guess, just go investigate the crimes themselves. <laughs> and they're just like, part detective, part attorney. And then, then detective gumshoe actually no there's two things that are really accurate it's the one is that phoenix cares about his clients and the other is that the detectives really love their prosecutor i think that that's the other thing they really they, they love edgeworth and they want to protect him and i think it's kind of sweet when like detective gumshoe gets really sad that edgeworth is accused of a crime he's like i have to find evidence that he's innocent and you're like that's that's good we haven't played that <laughs> far job. We have a, you're spoiling this for me. I'm, oh, I'm no! kidding. I'm messing with you. No, I, uh, I actually started playing at home. James has played ahead a bit. So Edgeworth gets accused of a crime? Yeah. yeah. And you get him off he because does. you're amazing? Because you're the best attorney? You're the ace attorney? You're, you're ace attorney. Um, well, I won't spoil the result of it then. Um, but it just it cracks me up because... It, I just love how close the relationship is between the one detective and Edgeworth. And Edgeworth is just sitting there the entire time like, oh, don't talk to me. I have important prosecutor business. And he's just very, very serious all the time. And so that's um, accurate then. Prosecutors are totally like that. Actually, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that oh, no. Next week, we're going to invite a prosecutor to come to the street. <laughs> I'm missing it. <laughs> 
gosh. We actually, we did have a prosecutor in Petersburg who reminded me so much of Edgeworth. Um, and every time it made me laugh because he, he's now a judge, actually. He's been oh, promoted, cool. so congratulations to him. He's very, he's very, very formal, like always extremely formal. Even if he met you in person, he'd be like, hello, Miss Gibson, how was your day? And I'm like, it's just, you just be a person. It's fine. Um, so, so I just think be it's a person. Accurate. Don't be a lawyer for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be a lawyer for two seconds. Yeah. I know it's hard, but <laughs> yeah, some 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 habits yeah. die hard, right? Well, that's cool that he's a judge. Um, I wonder if that's like the next video game, Phoenix Wright, Ace Judge. Judge. Like, what, what you, what you... Yeah. Then he could be the one asking, "Are you ready for this trial? Do you know what a defendant is?" Good, you're ready. <laughs> Do you know what a defendant is? <laughs> I, I wish it were like that. Um, right. When I got sworn in to the Eastern District, it was funny because um, the attorney that signed my thing and said, y you can go in and you have to swear in, you know. And I, I promise I've read the rules of federal civil procedure, right? And um, anyway, he said that in the past, they used to like actually quiz you when they swore you in. The judge would be like, oh, so you've read them, huh? And they'll like ask you questions. And if you got them wrong, they didn't swear you in. I'm all like, are you kidding me? He goes, yeah, I think you're in front of this one judge who's going to swear you in. He might, he might very well ask you a question. I'm all like, oh, gosh. Like, so anyway, oh, no. he didn't. I, it That's was easy. But yeah, it would yeah. be terrifying. That was almost a part of... That was almost a part of my swearing in ceremony last time. Um, really? When I was there, yeah, we were, I was up in Nova getting ready at the federal courthouse and they were talking and one of the judges from the panel said, okay, so, you know, sometimes I ask questions to test everybody and long pause, but I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> And everybody, like you could see everybody just collapse in their chair. Just that is such a judge oh, thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> They're so mean for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> we're yeah. we're going to be careful what we say about judges on the stream, though. So judges are great. <laughs> we love judges. Judges are fantastic. Um, I judges think they help just our clients us a little most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing wrong with being a little uncomfortable, I suppose. Um, yeah, well, so let's, what, what else do you like about Phoenix attorney? What, what, what is realistic? I mean, we do say objection, but yeah, we do. <laughs> we do say objection a lot. Not maybe at the times that he says it, but you know, it's, <laughs> do you stand up point and scream? I mean, yes, I really want to do that in court actually one day, you just stand up and just, objection, your honor. Um, maybe a jury trial. <laughs> That'd probably be the best, <laughs> yeah. most effective. I mean, um, if the judges are like, sit down, counsel, like, <laughs> you just raise your hand um, and say objection, Your Honor. Like, that's just whenever I disagree with the prosecutor, objection, it's damaging to my case. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those. Objection, I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. <Yeah. laughs> well, let's, let's talk about some good objections, though. What are some reasonable objections? Let's, uh, Huh. Give give our audience a preview of what's realistic. You can't just be like objection. I don't like that question, right? Like, oh gosh, yeah. Well, objections are one of those things that I always am so anxious to make because you always have to make them in the moment, like interrupt someone, which is so unnatural, right, for your normal right. conversation. Um, the one that I have found myself using most is foundation or conclusions of if there's a lack of foundation to establishing the evidence like that's the most common one um that i've seen usually because the officers are just talking and telling a story and they don't actually set the background for whatever it is and so you just objection foundation and they just tell the story again a different way yeah. um there's uh there's not really a lot that i've i have seen i've seen some people do some really fun objections where you know it's um like an objection to evidence coming in and you wind up with a motion to suppress and you get the actual fun, like trial lawyer movie stuff where you're like, no, this evidence shan't come in for there's an objection. And it's great. 
And most of the time, it's just objection hearsay, and the judge says, it, I mean, it's not for the truth of the matter, so, eh. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, um, I wish they talked about that more in law school where like it really just depends on the judge guys like these are the lists yeah. you know and you need to know the rules generally but like everybody's there's a ref his name is your honor and um everybody makes their plays and you see how it turns yeah. out anyway yeah i think that's that was one of the biggest things that i i realized when i started practicing after i mean in law school, they kind of tell you, but they don't really explain as much that, that the results of your case in criminal law or civil law is just so much more determined by who your judge is and how good your lawyers are and how well they know the judge. Like, those are the three factors that affect your case more than most things, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't know, James. What, what follow-up did you have on our Phoenix Wright discussion? Well, I mean, I think back to some of the court hearings and appearances that I've had in my one major civil trial that I've had, I think out of nerves, I sounded close to Phoenix because I was like, whoa, 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 whoa objection. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the like, that's probably how I came across. But um, yeah, James Williams, it, it really Ace does Attorney. just depend. <laughs> You saw it here first, I mean, everybody. I, I did get an oral contract kicked out. It wasn't an oral contract. So that was pretty exciting. But oh, I really like uh, what you said. The judge yeah. said, can I share it? He said, an oral contract is worth the paper it's printed on. I was like, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. James got that part. I mean, that, that part was really cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that part was really cool. Most of the other times, it, like, like Nicole said, and like, you've echoed it really does just depend i mean we've been doing the same si uh, i was going to say sigs but special immigrant juvenile status um cases and it's basically a child custody case with a little bit of extra language for immigration purposes so i handle those and i've been doing it for a year now and we still get random objections to tiny details and it just depends on which jurisdiction you're in. You know, sometimes they're like, I don't like how you filled out that blue sheet. I don't <laughs> like that custody form. And then other times it's, well, you know, I'm not sure that we have service or I'm not sure that, you know, this particular thing worked out and you're like, I've never been asked about this before. So I never thought it was an issue. And that kind of, that's something that, I guess being comfortable with it is just being a lawyer, but it is kind of interesting to get to know that, you know, you can show up and maybe the judge isn't even trying to pull the carpet out from underneath your feet. But if you're not quite, you know, expecting those types of questions, Oh, well, what's the code section you're referring to again? It's like, Oh, well, this is custody. And I've been doing this for a year. Oh, wow. Uh, and you're the first person notes. to ask me. <laughs> uh, 16.1-240 something, Your Honor. Can, just give me the benefit of the doubt. Like, it's in there, I swear. <laughs> um, so this actually makes me think, the, so one of the hardest, I, and I don't know if you deal with this in your practice, Nicole, but but for, for, for us on our end, we end up filling out a bunch of forms. Uh, and I imagine you fill out some forms too. They should add a forms component to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney for it to be more realistic. <laughs> like you have to fill out a form right and if you get it wrong, <laughs> you're not an Ace Attorney. So, yeah. Oh, that'd be send really you that, that's feedback. Yeah, yeah. The clerk's office just sends it back. Like this was wrong, do it again. <laughs> 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 my favorite form we were filling out this one form i forget what it was for and it was a local virginia state thing and it had this option yes or no and it was all like the court will dispense with such and such action yes or no right and i'm all like oh yeah that's my order of publication stuff well dispense has two meanings and they're opposites well, oh, so no. which exactly. one do you yes. check right and I called the I clerk and she's all like, I don't know which one to check either. And I'm like, what are we doing here? Right? <laughs> like, oh, no. right? Oh, man. There is, there is one jurisdiction that I will not name that I work <laughs> in regularly. 
And, yeah, don't name it. Um, don't name it. Just, just for the sake of staff, I don't want to cause any right. kind of doxing or whatever. But yeah, so there's this one jurisdiction where working with the clerks is a little bit more stressful than other jurisdictions. And um, we had that order of publication issue, the other party. We haven't had any contact with them. Um, these are custody cases, divorce cases. So we usually say, okay, the court requires the other side get notice. So they post notice in a magazine or a newspaper. So that's order of publication. Well, um, yeah, like Jacob was just saying, there's a box on the order of publication form. Do you want to um, request the order of publication? And then you have an option that says dispense with publication in a newspaper. And um, we checked that because we usually try to avoid publishing it in a newspaper because it, um, depending on which publication what, you use, it could be Nicole? a couple hundred dollars. So did you did it just wind up actually published in the newspaper? <laughs> well, no, not. I mean, yeah, okay, actually, good. the the long term the long term option the <laughs> the result was yes because we just got so frustrated working with the jurisdiction and we said, you know what, fine, just publish it. <laughs> but uh, we, you know, it's a matter of 300, 200 to $300 for some of these publications. So yeah. if you don't have a very wealthy client and you're trying to look at as dispense with, if you Google dispense, it means to get rid of or forego. Or but if you, out. or actually, sorry, if you if it's dispense if it's dispense it's like to send out but if you look up the phrase dispense with then that means to forego so i just looked up the definition saying, I james do i'm going to read this okay this to be published. <laughs> distribute or provide or manage without or get rid yeah. of right so am i distributing and providing or am i getting rid of like which one am i doing here and why is this ever yeah. an option on a court form <laughs> and that's just what lawyering is. You have to look yeah. at those really yeah. interesting word choices. And sometimes it costs your client an extra $200, $300. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's the most ridiculous part to me. I think it's, it's the fact that, and part of it's that we're all so desensitized, right? Everyone who's part of the system is desensitized. The clerks, the judges, the, the lawyers, right? Yeah. People who work at the jail, right? This is all just like rote day-to-day, nine-to-five job stuff for them. But then, yeah. like, I had one the other day where it was kind of a similar situation where the person was, um, they were out on bond for a charge and then were brought back in for um, re restoration. So their bond had to be revoked, but it was just for restoration. And restoration just means they weren't found competent to stand trial, so they had to be restored with treatment. Well, it needed to be done inpatient, so their bond was revoked through no fault of their own, right? They didn't do anything wrong. Well, once the restoration is complete, they're sent back to um, the jail because their bond was revoked. We had a new bond hearing. And instead of reinstating the old bond that the client had already paid, the paperwork acted like it was a new bond. So in order to get out before the weekend, because it was Friday, the client had to pay another $350, which they had already paid. <laughs> and I was like, but, so it's either pay the $350 or stay in jail for another weekend until we could figure it out on Monday. And I was like, really? <laughs> like... I get it's just a clerical error, but like it, it, it's a weekend in jail. Like that sucks, guys. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't understand how people in the jail system in particular can be so cavalier. Like, well, it's just a weekend. I'm like, are you yeah. kidding me? Like, I've never yeah. spent a weekend in jail and I have no intention to ever do it. So, like, anyway. <laughs> That's true. I've enjoyed this conversation, Nicole. We have, we have uh, come up on our normal time. I don't know how much time James asked you for, but um, yeah, I guess that's our recommendation. Capcom, if you're listening, add a forms component to, um, and a bureaucratic component to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney in any future versions. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a good takeaway. I like make that. it more realistic that way. <laughs> um, in, well, so for a lot of our people, we, we end by saying, how can we follow you and hire you? But... That's not that's not super applicable in your case, right? So don't right. get in trouble. But if you do get in trouble in Petersburg, so that Nicole can help you, is that what we should say? Yeah, no. okay. There we go. That's that's, that's the closest. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Don't get in trouble here. Team Gavel does not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Team Gavel does not endorse breaking any laws or violating <laughs> any criminal statutes generally, but trust trust your public defenders. There we go. Yes. Yeah. That's uh, a good answer. There you go. Thank um, you so much for having me. This was a delight. It was nice to meet you. I appreciate yeah. you having me. Same. Um, and uh, go ahead, Nicole. Did you have away. anything that you wanted to promote, or um, I mean, like we said, we don't necessarily have a way to kind of refer you to clients or anything like yeah. that. But um, yeah, um, if you want to do any kind of promos or anything, I don't have any promos really. I mean. I think you said something about my, my partner does Twitch streams also, but they're all like, I mean, they are gaming related. So we did talk about some video games today. He does a variety streaming gaming channel. It's Travi Pew uh, at Twitch. Um, and recently he just did like a whole charity stream for stop um, Asian American Pacific Islander hate. Mm. We talked about a few of, like the legal structures that have caused and created the history of bigotry that have existed around the Asian community. So he does some cool stuff like that. If you want to go check him out. That's all I've really got. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It was lovely to meet you. Lovely to see you again, James. You have a good rest of your day. All right. Bye, everybody. Legal information is not legal advice specific to your situation.